Welcome to Sober Doc Coffee, a weekly coffee chat sharing experience, strength, and hope for anyone on the sober road to recovery. You can download Sober Doc Coffee weekly on all podcast platforms and check us out on Instagram at Sober Doc Coffee Podcast and on Twitter at Sober Coffee Pod. To learn more about us and to help support these sessions, visit online at Sober Doc Coffee. Here are your hosts, two guys on their own path to recovery, Mike and Glenn. Let's join them at the coffee shop. Good morning, brother. Good it's, morning. It's my turn to say good morning. Uh, I know you fill up the to... coffee cup. Let's go. Yeah, I know, right? We're ready. We're ready. I got a double tall latte going right now. Yeah, or special day something. too. We have a special guest. Yeah, we do. Yeah, Ruthann is back in the uh, coffee shop with us. Hey, Ruthann, how you doing? Good Ruthann, morning. Welcome. Fine. How are you guys? Good. My favorite fellas. Well, yeah. Well, you know, although Ruthann's not drinking coffee, we pay coffie. her to say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ruthann's drinking a monster. She's got a drink. She's got a little, <laughs> a little drink. <laughs> That's another program. I right? go. I go all the way. <laughs> yeah, <right>. Full strength. <laughs> there you go. Wait, no, 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 wait, not like that. <laughs> I have uh, all the way. <laughs> so yeah, so Glenn, I love uh, our topic this morning because uh, we uh, Glenn will always shoot out there. There's 22 things I do every day to keep myself sober. And I'm like, tell me more, and then he moves on to the next topic. So today we're going to stop, pause, and we're going to talk about your 22 things that you do every day. Yeah, it's funny. I've actually been challenged at times, you know, and I've probably. I don't know why I started doing this. You know, again, Mike, I wish I took the the notebook like like you do, but you know, I sat there and said, I do a lot of things, you know. And it you know, I think the first time I threw out a number was was twelve. You know, mm-hmm. hey, there's twelve things I do to, to stay sober and you know, now I it's twenty two. Mm-hmm. Um and, and I don't know if I just keep adding. Well, I some of it I keep adding or some of it I just recognize as being an effective tool, right? But I've been called out. You know, people are like, you know, all right, what are these 22, right? Give me five of them, right? you know, or give me 10 of them or give me all of them. So, you know, um, you know, and then back when, you know, last year we did a session on, you know, relapse prevention, mm-hmm. which I can't wait for that to be one of our, you know, podcast topics. Right. Um, when we talk about relapse prevention. I actually listed the, the, the 21 things I did at that time and, and we, we've added one. So there's 22 things now. So I thought, hey, let's just let's just go go through them. I think a lot of them will be recognized. I think, you know, sometimes some of these will be like second nature, or common sense, right? right. But right. for me, they're not really common sense. They're actually tools that I use or things that I do that help me, you know, quote unquote, stay in the fairway, as I like right. to point it. Well, you know what's so great about? It? I mean, you you tapped into my greatest fear, and uh, my greatest fears have changed over the years. My greatest fear today is relapse. Because I've come to realize uh, that that without my sobriety, I have nothing. I, I, everything goes back to how it was, mm. and so, so my true. So, yeah. So you tapped onto that. So you know, you're saying we really ought to talk about relapse prevention at some point. Boy, we talk about these 22 things today. Yeah. You're helping me with my relapse prevention. Uh, you know, so yeah. Yeah, it's why I mean, I, I was talking to a sponsee yesterday, and he says, uh, he goes, hey, do you really do those 22 things? Or, or uh, and, and, and and he's like, you know, do, do you really, you know, and, and he's trying to work a minimalistic program, you mm-hmm. know? Well, do I have to go to a meeting a week or do I, you know? So he's, he's trying to do as little as possible. And, and so what, what I told him with a very strong degree of confidence is if I went a week without working these tools without using these tools without working my sober plan of 22 things if i didn't do these 22 things for a week i'd be drinking again right i just know and and part of that is not just being overly dramatic Mm -hmm. i have proof right so i mean you 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 can't argue with facts right so well jump in all right give us us some of your 22 so for for sake of time, you know, I mean, a lot of these are self-explanatory, but I might give you one or two. And, and Ruth Ann, feel feel free to jump in. So the first one is play the tape. Mm. You know, and, and and these aren't really in any specific order, you know. But play the tape. I uh, can't tell you how many times a week I play the tape when I get into a situation. If I do X, Y will happen, mm-hmm. and I just play the tape. And and what that means for for those that aren't used to that is is I based on my experience. And based on experience of the stories I hear in the room, you know, if I choose to do this 
action, if I choose to drink, right, what will happen? Mm -hmm. So if I go in a situation and I say, hey, I would love a drink right now. And yes, six years sober, that still comes through my mind, Mm -hmm. right? You know, Glenn, that's a, that's a good thing because, but you know, I'm I'm also I can't wait to hear like with twenty two other twenty one others, but you know, and that play the tape forward. I did not have that capacity when I first walked in that door. I mean, you know, logically, you know, yes, you know, do pain now or pain later, but I didn't even have when I came in the doors. I didn't even have the ability to play the tape i think i was i was just functioning with my reptilian brain give me drink give Mm -hmm, me my mm -hmm. my pain is pain is there so um it it, it take it took me me a while to be able to get to the point where i was able to even play a middle tape like well yes yes so uh, how do i get to the point where i'm able to even play the tape so again you, you know the way i like to point out going back to the promises Sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm on the slow train. You know, <laughs> nothing happened for me for, for light switch. But, you know, and, and part of my story, which helped with this, was I took gain abuse for a year. So I relapsed a lot when I would say, you know, screw it, you know, and I would just drink. So when I took gain abuse, that took the capability of having a drink away. I mean, I just couldn't drink, and, and yet I'd be in that situation, and it would just click, you know, and over time, it wasn't a light switch. Over time, it was like, okay, this is when I normally would have drank, you know, now what am I going to use? So I, so I learned about playing the tape from the rooms, and I learned what that meant, and I just started practicing it mm-hmm. and say, okay, if I did this, what's going to happen? Can I ask you another question? Yeah. So why do you take anti anti abuse or whatever how you say it? Um, why do you take that when you know it's going to make you sick? So that you know that you, do you take that when you are strong, or do you take it you know like you take your vitamins or do you? Uh, oh. Great question. So an abuse is a pill that you take daily, and it does it has no effect on your body, and it runs through your bloodstream has no effect on your body whatsoever until you ingest alcohol and you get very sick from it. I mean, for me, I couldn't even get two sips of beer down and my face would blow up. It'd be all red and, and I'd have problems breathing. You know, of course I tried, you know, of course I tested it. <laughs> and um, so, so what it does is it stays in your system for two weeks. So for, for me, you know, and so if I wanted to relapse, I would stop taking the pill today and then I have to wait two weeks. And, and there were many times I'm like, you know, this, this is crap. I, I'm just going to try drinking again. And, and that was in the moment. But then two days later, I'd be like, no, I really want sobriety. I'll take my, my pill again. So that two week lag was genius. Whoever came up with that. Um, because if I stop taking today and drink tomorrow, you know, or stop take, if I didn't take it this morning, I could drink tonight. It, I, that wouldn't have worked. Right. You know, but the fact that two weeks and then what that did, Ruthann, is it gave me a chance to learn how to use these tools, right. you know, because then a, I recognized when I was going to drink, what the situation was. Now I couldn't drink. Right. So now what? Is that part of your 22 and abuse or no? That's just a, an undergird. Um, that was not. Okay. 23. Well, well here, here's legal Mike. Yeah. Legal Mike is going to throw out there that, you know, it's, it, you talk to your doctor, right, about about its use. Is uh, that to, is, is that disclosure? That my, yeah, that was my <laughs> legal disclaimer. I could talk really fast, like in yeah. those medical things. And taking an abuse could cause your arms to fall off. It could also cause your head to turn around. I mean, frankly, frankly, people die from taking an abuse right. and drinking. Right, right. It's very serious. Right. There are few doctors that will prescribe it because it is so dangerous. Right. But I was already yeah dangerous <laughs> on on the gurney. Yeah. The neurologist told me I was not going to see morning. Right. I'm not sure how closer the, you, you can get from that. Right. So, gotcha. Um, for me, it was worth it. So, so right. play, play the, the tape, tape is, is definitely, you know, if I do this, what's going to happen? And right. I had enough evidence. If I drink, what hospital am I going to next? Right. You know, what detox, what relation am I going to blow through this time? Got it. So that's a deterrent. Mm-hmm. Second thing is go to meetings. 
Mm. Uh, today, I mean, I used to go three to five meetings a week. Today, I go to 10 meetings a week. A lot of them are on Zoom, so it's more convenient. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's not just, you know, plug in. I attend, I participate, I share, mm-hmm. and I also chair, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so meetings are very important to me. That's a real learning center for mm-hmm. me. A, mm-hmm. I'm making the commitment to go, to plug in, and I learn from them. Mm-hmm. Next one is accountability. This mm-hmm. one is really important for me. Everybody around me in my personal life and a few key people in my business life know that I'm an alcoholic. Um, and, and so I tell people because I want to be accountable, right? And, you know, one, one funny story, I think I've shared this before, is my uh, wife, we, we have teenage kids and she with this Life 360 app, right, that tells you where you're at. And she goes, hey, we're going to download this app for the family. And I'm like, that's great. Kids need it. She goes, <laughs> well, you know, you're, you're going to be part of it too. And I'm like, okay. You know, so I'll know where the kids are. She goes, well, it's also going to tell everybody where you're at. You know, and it's so funny because in my mind, in that reptilian croc brain, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, bullshit. Oh, you know, I'm 50 some years old, you know? And, and at the end of the day, <clears throat> today, I have more accountability today um, than, than I had when I was 12. Right. I mean, I just, you know, so everybody knows where I'm at at all times. And, and it's funny because my, my brain says, that's bull crap. But, but then I pause and I'm like, I don't do anything or go anywhere today that I'm ashamed of. I used to. Right. But not anymore. I don't go to the liquor store. Right. So your guardrails. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm accountable. You know, there, there's a guy in my program that lived five houses down from me. I'm cutting the grass. I can't cut the grass with beers, you know, and, you know, like, like, like I used to, and, and he walks by, right? And people call me. If I don't show up for meetings, people call me. If I don't show up for, you know, our men's group, people are going to say, hey, Glenn, what the crap? What's going on? So, you know, accountability. Accountability. Um, <clears throat> next one is uh, work with a sponsor. Mm. I have a sponsor. I've had him for years. He's a gem in my life, a gem to my, my sober program. Um, as I know, you all have sponsors too. Um, and, and, and part of it is not just texting them and saying, hey, dude, what's up? You know, I certainly do that. But I see him at meetings. I work with him at meetings. We do one-on-ones. We go to dinners. You know, we, 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 we play golf. We talk about the steps. And, and I know the situations today to, to touch base with him on, you know. Um, you know, we use the word in the promises intuitively. You know, I use him less today because I already know what he's going to say most of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going to say, Glenn, it's none of your business. Don't worry about it. He's going to say, you know, hey, stop patting yourself on the back. I mean, I've got his answers already down because we've been through so much. Yeah. Glenn, are we okay? For those that are uncomfortable using the word sponsor, I've heard people call them life coaches, advisors, you know, a sober buddy, you know. Friend. A friend, a friend who's helping me work the steps and work the program. You call them whatever you whatever want. Whatever you want. Just have one. Use this it. This is a WE program. You know, there are people in this program who try to do it themselves. Right. And they struggle. Yes. That's the only thing I can say. So yeah. call, them, call them whatever you want. I call them my, my sponsor. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's funny. We, we were not friends to start out with, but we have built a very strong friendship. Likewise. Yep. Next one is daily prayer meditation and reflection so typically i get up at four in the morning and ruth ann's here shaking her head <laughs> you know, gratitude um, yeah you know and that's something that i every morning um i even even rushed this morning getting here super early you know i still did it in in my own way but i i, I pray for the day i pray for you know i i express gratitude so you know i, I used to I used to curse the mornings. Now I crave them. And, and part of my, my craving today is my quiet time of just plugging in. Meditation. I read stuff. Um, I do this, you know, this daily devotional that, that people send out. Um, I listen to stuff on YouTube that's very meaningful and really speaks to me. And, you know, that's my, and, and reflection, that's not only prayer time, praying to my higher power, but it's also listening time. Mm-hmm. So that's super important. Um, in the big book. So the uh, next one is in the big book, page 86. Um, this changed my life. 
uh, I was in a four month in 2014. I was in a four month program. You know, again, for me, going from a right hand, a right hander to a left hander, <clears throat> excuse me, is not is not easy, mm-hmm. right? It takes time, and so we did this every day for four months, and I still do it today. Um, it's page 86 in the big book. Um, upon awakening, you know, what do you do in the morning, and what do you do at night? We used to sit there with eight guys on our program. You know, seven o'clock in the morning. Upon awakening, what do we do? And then at 10 o'clock at night, couldn't believe I stayed up that late. At 10 o'clock at night, we get together and we, you know, reflect on our day. You know, where we, you know, how do we act that day, right? Did we do what we say we're going to do? How do we treat people? How do we behave? You know, and is there anything that I need to make amends for? Mm-hmm. You know, so, so page 86 of the big book. 86 of the big book. And, and for those not familiar, we refer to it as the big book. The book title name is Huck Hawks Anonymous. Um, and they can find it on page 86 of yeah, that. We blue call big it book, not the, the black big, big blue book. book. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Next one is go to church. You know, I go to church weekly. Uh, there's actually three different churches that I plug into. Um, they're the formats that I like. There's more spirituality than religion. Um, you know, it, it, you know, instead of all the rules, they talk about relationship. You know, so they're so so I get fed. You know, mm-hmm. um, next one is uh, you know I'm involved in a church men's group. Uh, we meet weekly. You know, sometimes it, it's topical. We actually, you know, for this recent one, we actually pulled out the Bible and we're doing a you know quote unquote Bible study, which actually still gives me a shiver. But um, but I'm getting a lot out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so there's you know. Up to 20 guys, you know, in this group, guys that are, you know, trying, you know, half of them or more are, are in AA and, and, you know, they're trying to be better men. They're trying to be better husbands, better friends, um, you know, live, live as better employees. Um, and they're working on their relationship with their higher power. Plus, so, you get that accountability aspect right back man, at you again. You don't show up. Yeah. What somebody, up with, somebody's what calling up you. With Glenn, yeah, right? Totally. Right. Um, Next one is honesty. Hmm. Um, you know, when when I was drinking, if my if my mouth was moving, uh, mm-hmm. there would be very little truth or honesty going on. Um, today, and it's still a work in progress. It's still progress, not perfection. Today, I don't have a problem with you know lying to Ruth Ann. What 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 I am still working on is I can give Ruth Ann seventy percent of the story that will shape it the way I want her to perceive it. But knowing dropping out the 30%, and, and I have a great story about my uh, wife with this, um, but excluding part of the story changes the story, right? To me, that's not really being honest. Mm-hmm. You know, if somebody walks away with a perception that isn't perfectly aligned with, with what the situation is, then I need to sharpen my honesty pencil. Mm-hmm. So I'm very aware of that because when I'm not honest, I know I'm not honest, and that starts to weigh on me. That starts to be, you know, changing my character back to the way it used to be. So mm-hmm. I'm very aware of that. Mm-hmm. Next one is three words: serve, serve, serve. And serving means serving the coffee. You know, when you know we're working our our, our men's group, and you know guys are working on their relationships with with their spouses and. And and I, I started this out by a joke, but Ruth and I used to say, serve the coffee. You know, and, and and it just means, hey, have a servant mentality. You know, instead of always focused on what I want, focus on what's good for her. And and there was a guy that was wrestling with his wife all the time. I'm like, hey, serve her coffee. I'm not gonna serve her coffee. You gotta be kidding me. You know? And I'm like, hey, I'm telling you what, you wake up in the morning and you serve her coffee, it is really hard to be pissed off or bent and serve the coffee at the same time it happy, just is happy wife happy life and, you know what and, and I'm, I'm coming up on three years being married to to my uh gem um and uh you know i i I'm, I'm telling you the secret is serving the coffee the secret is hey honey you want the bush there that's great you know, I have my ideas. My ideas don't matter. You know, really in the scheme of things, that's just being selfish. You know, that's just my ego. But serve, serve, serve. Serve the coffee at home. Serve the 12th step 
of the AA program gives you many opportunities to serve others, regardless of what it is. You know, Mikey, I love your example, man. You you just live, you know, service. You know, God needed a big book. And Mikey's like, where do you live? You know, M- Mikey has on, on these Zoom meetings, you know, Mikey has a sponsee. A sponsee was having a year, you know, celebrating year of sobriety. Mikey drove out. Mikey pops up in the background, g- gives him his coin on the spot. You know, I mean, that is service. You know, hey, I'll drive 40 minutes to give you a big book. You're not going to bed tonight without having a big book. Are you kidding me? That's service, you know. But you pick that up, you know, I, and I think that, uh, I think what what you amplify is, is it's good to have a plan, but you got to work the plan. You know, I, action. I, I that it's action, and I I uh, I hang around with you enough in these studies that we do, the church studies, and going to church with you, and going to AA with you, and I don't know when you take time to self fulfill your needs because constantly you are focused on the needs of somebody else. How can I help serve? What can I do to hear help you here, Mike? What can we do to help this guy? What can we do to help this gal? And and that's the way you live. It's action. It's you could you can I can write serve 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 down and have that as my plan of attack each day. But if I don't do something about it, uh, it's 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 a loose wheel. Well, it's just like Ruth Ann said. You have to give it to get it, right? right? And and what I have found out, and and I, I don't want to take up too much time on you know, on this, but I have so many examples of. Um, where where people have served me mm-hmm. and have asked for nothing in return. Right. That doesn't happen in the business world. Yeah. Right. It, do- no, doesn't. it doesn't. Yeah. And you know what strikes me is uh, listening to your steps. Um, uh, we are, you are a better human being today. And, and we become better human beings. And, and by listening to what you're saying makes me want to emulate that. Sure. And listening to others, it just... It becomes, oh, my focus is this rather than what I was doing is focusing on myself. So I, I love this. Yeah. And, and what I have found out factually is when I worry about serving others, I get more than what I could ever dream for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, just, it's just amazing. Um, next one, um, AA retreats. Mm. So that's not something I do weekly or monthly. There's one AA retreat I go on annually. Um, and because of COVID, it's been canceled the last two years. So I am, um, I am about ready to take the ball in my own hands and start playing in one for the fall uh, because they are very important to me. Number one, it just shows a level of commitment. I'm going to take a weekend out of my life, busy life. I am going to take a weekend out and tell myself and the world around me, I am not available this weekend. I am focused on my sobriety. And it is a time to unplug, you know, from the world and really say for the next three days, I am going to dive in. I'm going to recharge some some sub- sobriety batteries. So it's very important. You know, and if you if you don't buy if you don't buy into what Glenn has to say on the topic of retreating or unplugging and then plugging into yourself. Uh, go Google, go look at what the biggest business leaders, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, uh, et cetera, see what they do with their calendar year. They unplug. They absolutely unplug yep. to plug in to themselves. Yep, absolutely right. Uh, next one is I work the AA steps. Um, I have worked, you know, so let's just say I'm throwing out stupid numbers here, but let's say that I know AA at the 25% level. You know, there's a lot I still have to learn, a lot I still have to absorb, and et cetera. But let's just say I, that I know 25%. Of that 25%, I learned 20% of that going through the steps myself. Mm-hmm. You know, when I first time I went through the steps, a majority of what I have learned through the AA 12 step program has been working the steps with another alcoholic, being a sponsor, working them with sponsees. I'm a little outside the box. I do crazy stuff. I do worksheets. I do, you know, I, I get them to plug into other people. And, you know, so so it's not the normal, let's sit down and read the book together, you know. Um, he makes them write the promises out with their left hand. Ooh. Word word by word. Which is great right. if, you're <laughs> if you're a natural lefty. <laughs> well, then, well, then, Mikey, they, they get the right hand. Oh, <laughs> I see. Short. There, there, there is no shortcuts. Okay. 
Um, but I have learned a majority of what I know today, which is, you know, just a fraction of what there still is to, to learn out there. So I'm still learning. Um, but it's through diligently working the steps with a sponsee. That is a gem in life. That is a reward in life. It is priceless. And it's a privilege. And I tell everyone of that, that I said, it is such a privilege for me. You know, and, this, and, and then you get to the fifth step and they're sharing their, their fifth step with you. And I'm like, man, you know, nobody would tell me anything. I was such, such a bad drunk, right? And here people are trusting me today with their, I mean, such a privilege. Okay, next one is connect daily with other AAers. Um, you know, I have 30 names in my phone, probably more than that now. Um, you know, and there isn't a day that goes by uh, where I don't connect with other people in the program, whether it's sponsees, whether it's from people in a meeting, whether it's new people when I drop my phone number in the meeting, um, you know, or people reaching out or when I need to reach out just to check in with people. How about you, Ruth Ann? Well, I, I'm thinking of having that that collection of numbers is something that, because even, you know, if I call my sponsors, sponsor's not immediately available to me at the drop of a hat all the time. I can call somebody else, and and then and it works, and likewise, and it becomes a tree branch that you've got one person, and you've got a second person, and you know, just it, it provides flexibility and 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 as well as variety, because everyone knows you'll have a different. Each person has a different suggestion, and not not one person's one suggestion helps, but sometimes a collection of it. Because this is a program we design it to fit ourselves. I, I, and again, more of the more of the same. What we were saying; you, these are are great life tips. Yeah, you know, I uh, my phone prior to October eighteenth, two thousand eighteen, <laughs> my my phone was you know chuck full of uh, drug dealers and and uh, liquor store owners and and f- so quote unquote friends. And um, now my AA, so I, I start my AA, so it's AA Glenn, AA Ruth Ann, and, uh, you know, Bob's not happy about that because it takes me, to get to Bob, I've got to scroll past, you know, dozens and dozens of AAs, and inevitably I'll get, I'll get stopped as I'm zip scrolling, intending to call Bob. Uh, <laughs> now, if Bob was an AA, he'd be right up at the top of the list, right. but... Right. So, yeah, very, very valuable resource. That's so funny how I, I start mine with A. Uh-huh. Right? Just a, one A? <clears throat> Just one A. So, are they alcoholic or are they anonymous? Well, they're anonymous. Okay, right? they're anonymous. Yeah. So, there you go. So, but it's funny how they're first in yeah, my right? phone book. You know, Absolutely. I just, I just click. And, you know, and I, it's funny. I had a sponsor get all buffed at me one day. He's like, dude, I really need you. I called you and, and you didn't answer. I'm like, dude, I'm in 12 to 15 business meetings a day. You know, I said, I'm not, you know, I, I told you from the start, the expectation. I said, I'm not going to pick up every, I said, but we have like seven guys in our squad. You have all of their numbers sure. and you have more phone numbers outside of that. Right. You know, I said, you know, call, call your grand sponsor, right? Just call, mm-hmm. get somebody. Don't sit there and stew because you didn't get Glenn right. in the moment that you wanted. Excuse. So okay. yeah, connect with us. Connect. Next one is. A daily regular assessment of what we call the beam, right? And and I use that, you know, assessment or awareness. You know, just be where am I at right now? I also refer to this as the Ferris wheel. You know, that's how I relate to to my life. I'm very aware of where I'm at on the Ferris wheel or where I'm at on the beam. Mm-hmm. And and it's also, um, you know, what I love about the beam is it gives the alternative, right? It says, if you're feeling this, here's what you should be feeling. Here's, here's a way. And it really helps me shift my thinking from negative or I'm in a cranky spot, I'm in a dangerous spot. You know, I, I just have a great awareness. Mm-hmm. So, so I love that beam. Okay. Um, guardrails kind of goes with, with accountability. You know, I have guardrails today. I know when I go to a situation, I mean, I got six years sober, but when I go into a social situation, I still think it through, I plan it through, I build guardrails. One of my best guardrails is called hit and run. 
And that's when I have to go to a party, especially in my neighborhood or wherever. And I know there's going to be a lot of drinking. And not just social drinking, but there's going to be really drinking, right? I don't, I don't hang out. I, I might be there for 30 minutes. I do a hit and run. You know, I go, I connect with the key people that I want to say hi to, fist bump, hug, you know, have some, some chit chat with. 30 minutes, I'm gone. Mm-hmm. I, I, just, do the, I just I, don't hang out. I do the pickup line. And that's, I use that with my wife and I say, it's pickup line time. And she, and she knows exactly what that means. It means I'm going to be out and about and I need her to be with me mm-hmm. just so that I don't sway out of where yep. I'm going. It's my pickup line. I'm picking you up. Let's go. Yep. So there, there's some guardrails. And, you know, I live with the guardrails. And I mean, there's things that I won't do today because it's right on the edge. Mm-hmm. And I know if I go too far on that edge, mm-hmm. hey, that, that edge might crumble on me and I might be right down that ravine. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. guardrails are very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, next one is coaching sessions. You know, I have a therapist. I go to them periodically. Um, we talk about things that are mostly, I mean, he certainly relates and he certainly helped me with a lot of the alcoholism issues. Just gives me a, a more of a medical, psychological perspective. Mm-hmm. But he really helps me with life issues that I go through. Mm-hmm. Step Stepchildren, he's been amazing giving me perspectives on that, right? giving me perspectives on how to get outside of myself, gives me perspectives on, you know, hey, Glenn, it doesn't always need to be your way. Mm -hmm. You know, step back and just, you know, he's really taught me with my daughters to be a listener. You know, I used Mm -hmm. to drive the conversations. You know, so so I have an amazing coach. You know, I call him a coach. Yeah. Not a therapist. I, You know, I I think they can be absolutely, it took took several, I weeded through several, until I became to the point where I was a hundred percent honest with them, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they provided great value. When I was telling them exactly what was going on in my head, they could actually move me through. So, yeah, prior, my prior experience with those bad therapists was uh, turns out that I was the bad one in the equation. It's that thirty percent, Glenn was saying that we don't, we forgot that, to that's include. Right. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's funny. I started really, you know started making progress when I started being honest. Right. You know, if I have a broken leg, but I go in and tell the doctor I got a broken arm, right. my leg's not going to get fixed. That's it's a, just not. Right. Next one is live one day at a time. Yeah, there you go. Um, you know, I used to live a lot in the past, and that's a lot of heavy weight. You know, a lot of ways that I missed it, my own expectations, my own desires, you know, my own plan. That was really crushing for me. Mm-hmm. And also things that were coming up, but... One of the things several years ago this really helped me is there's a guy in the program with with a meeting. We were after the meeting we were talking. He's he was new. He's like, ah, oh, this this not drinking forever. Man, I just I just can't get my arms mm-hmm. around it. You know, I just it's just all I can think about is my daughter's wedding and you know what am I going to do at my daughter's wedding and the toast. What am I going to do with the toast and not being able to drink and crush it? That's gonna you know and just the the mental gymnastics that he was going through. And, and I stopped him. I goes, "How old's your daughter?" He goes, "Well, she's three. <laughs> I just, you know, I I look back at that, and I'm like, you know, that's the value of living in today, right? I don't have to worry about my daughter's wedding. That's you know, 27 years from now or right. whatever. So it's funny, you know. Again, some action steps that I do, um, living one day at a time. You know, I was out golfing with my sponsor and I get a text from my daughter and it's a picture of her engagement ring, right? So now all the jokes I have about, you know, your daughter's wedding, now it's going to happen to me, right? The first thing I do is I go to my sponsor and I say, hey, we're going on a road trip. I'm taking my sponsor with me to the wedding. So that's accountability, that's guardrails, that's you know people in the program, right. and that's living one day at a time. So now I've eliminated that year and a half of head trash mm-hmm. of what am I going to do at my daughter's wedding because I know my sponsor is going to be sitting right there next to me, mm-hmm. right? So there's four tools all in one. Do you think that you know this anxiety of what am I going to do for this big event? I what struck me 
uh, is that I, I'm thinking that perhaps, and I, because for me, I'm thinking I will never have fun again because I had lots of fun drinking, and mm-hmm. that, or I won't be able to celebrate. And again, that society of you know, you know, um, grooming us just, and they did this from the time we were very little. Like, oh, you know, you've got to have this Twix Twix cereal because it's going to make you happy, or mm-hmm. the, these shoes will make you you know jump higher. And celebration is, you know, for alcohol. And I never thought that I would be able to celebrate, or I didn't even think I was ever going to be happy again. So, <laughs> keeping that, you know, that in mind as your, as your, um, you know, your part of your psychology is, yeah. we have more fun and more enjoyment. I think, I, I think, I, I totally, I love what you, what you just said there about having your sponsor come along to the wedding. I just. Uh, I just hope you're going to get him a separate room. <laughs> well, I actually looked at an Airbnb with like a cottage out back. There you go, beautiful. You know, yeah, yeah, totally. In, you. in no, law, totally. in law but, unit. <laughs> but that goes back to the promises intuitively. Yeah. I didn't think about it. I didn't He's stress. I went right in the right time. I went right to him. I'm like, That's dude, right. we're going road trip. I'm showing the picture. He goes, absolutely, beautiful. man. He goes, can't wait. Beautiful. All right. Next one is health, nutrition, sleep, and exercise. Mm-hmm. Okay. So first of all, I have a life-threatening allergy to exercise. <laughs> Still work on that one. <laughs> but like sleep for me, my whole life I slept three hours a night. And 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 what I know now is that it's very dangerous for overall mental health and, and approach. So I'm very particular and stingy with my sleep. I'm selfish with my sleep. Um and, and I track it and I measure it and all that stuff, right? But it's you know, very important. Um I mean I drank so much alcohol, it took my brain a while and probably still is healing in some ways. Um, you know, but I really recognize how all around health, you know, if I get out and exercise and I'm, and, and I'm eating right and fueling my body the right way, um, you know, and when, when I lose weight, you know, I feel better. You know, and it, it, it just helps all around. Okay. Um, next one is I plan events, and that's a little bit like we talked about with the guardrails. You know, people stress, oh, I got to go on a fishing trip. You know, I set things up ahead of time, you know, um, you know, I'm just very particular about, you know, planning things and I'm selfish with my sobriety. I care more about my sobriety than what you think of me. Mm-hmm. And it took me a while to get there. Mm-hmm. And I relapsed a lot of times because of that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But now I'm like, you know what? I care more about my sobriety. So, you know, I may not go on the fishing trip this year. Mm-hmm. You know, I may not play golf with those guys this year. You know, I, I just won't. Um, but I, I, I plan my events, including exits, and we've already talked about that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I own my sobriety today. Um, that, that's my next one. I own my sobriety. Ruthann, I don't drink. Mm-hmm. Mike, I just don't drink. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and most people, the ones that have any issue with that or explore it further, mm-hmm. you know, it's funny because if I w- was at the dinner with you and say, I don't eat asparagus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nobody will it's like okay <laughs> you know but the minute you say you don't drink people won't explore it well why why you know oh you know, sure you know, I'm, I'm not addicted to asparagus you know <laughs> but they but the, uh, most of the people that have you know questions or, or issues it's because they have issues themselves yeah. you know um, but you know I, I remember I really tried this out I was two years sober and I'm out you know in, in Manhattan with a CEO client and we're sitting at a bar and I'm drinking my sparkling water and he's challenging me why I'm not drinking. I mean, really over the top, right? Meanwhile, he is sitting there with a glass of like frou-frou, light blush, red, light blush wine with ice cubes in it. And, yeah. and, and it, right then it just clicked for me and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to own my... I said, you know what? I just don't drink. I don't find the need to drink. And besides... If you call that drinking, <laughs> uh, I, no ice cubes in yeah, wine that's ever. Like, call no, them out. Light, light blush wine with ice cubes. <laughs> in. I'm like, sure you. I'm like, dude, if you call that drinking, uh, right? So, I, hey, I just don't drink. Right. You know, and right. and if, if people explore, you know what? My life is so much better because I don't drink. Right. Period. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Mic drop. Two. Get it, mic. Mic Mike drop. drop. Um, don't drop mic. And <laughs> my 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 next thing is ask for help. Um, I have learned my whole life. I thought asking for help was a weakness. You know, my dad brought me up be very self-sufficient. You know, asking for help is a weakness. What what I find now is asking for help is a strength. 
Number one, it helps me control my ego. You know, I can't do everything. Um, and I get a better result. I just do. Mm-hmm. And I have enough proof that when I ask for help and we solve a problem collectively, I get better results. Mm-hmm. Period. Um, next one is continue to surrender regularly, daily, meaning, you know, when I have an issue, call my sponsor. I am prepared when I make that call to surrender to my sponsor. I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to take what he tells me. I'm going to listen. When I, you know, listen to different, you know, podcasts or YouTubes or when I read the big book, I surrender to the words in the big book. Mm -hmm. I don't sit there and try to change the words and say, well, it should say this. It should say that. That's my ego, Mm -hmm. you know, and and that's not good. You know, Mm -hmm. I sit there and say, okay, I'm going to take that. Um, and especially when people share a meeting and I don't agree. And then that's an alarm for me mm-hmm. to really surrender and to say, you know what? I should be listening to what Ruth Ann says. I don't like it, but there's a reason why I don't like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because it's probably against, you know, something that I want or it's probably needs to be changed or, you know, so, so that's that. And then the uh, last thing that, that, you know, we've, we've added is, is podcasting. You know, I never thought, that you know I, I have an anonymous Twitter account for sobriety and you know I love engaging with, with folks on there and sharing experience strength and hope and this kind of grew out of that mm-hmm. um, you know but but podcasting you know just putting experience and connecting with you Ruth Ann and you Mikey doing this um, you know just experience sharing experience strength and hope with somebody on that path of recovery who could benefit from hey just having a connection just having somewhere to turn you know, just putting something on. These you know? are pearls of wisdom that you're sharing. I thought there'd be like some secret formula, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to write this down and it's going to, I'm going to, you know, have my checklist. Gosh, I'm just struck by this is, this is life. Just These a, are great living tips. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful guides. Good list. Uh, yeah. Great list of 22 things. I, I, I know that by the time we meet next time, it'll be 23 things. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, but here's the thing, and, yeah. and and somebody said to me recently, they're like, Glenn, you still need to do those 22 things. Do you, do you really need to do those? But they're still working. <laughs> well, see, that's what, I, that's what I said to them. I said, well, yes, I have to do them. I said, here's the thing. I said, maybe the number's 12. Mm-hmm. Maybe the number's 16. What I know is that the 22 work. And when I start subtracting... Mm-hmm. I am going to be in a danger zone mm-hmm. because one of those things I will find out too late that that was the one that was really working. <laughs> Not going to happen to you, is it? So I, I just keep doing them. Just keep doing them. It's a new way of living. Glenn, love it. Thank you so Ruth much. Ruth Ann, love. Yeah. Thank Good you seeing so you guys. Much yes, for thanks for being in. here again with Great us. Great seeing you. Yeah. All right. Love All right. It. See you next, thanks, Brian. next time around. Bye, guys. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for joining us for today's Coffee Chat contact the show, email us at podcast at sober.coffee. If you need immediate help, the AA hotline is 800-839-1686. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 800-273-8255. Remember, Mike and Glenn are sharing their own journey on the path to recovery. Any suggestions, medical or otherwise, are their own experiences and should not be viewed as professional advice. See you next week. And remember, there is a solution.